Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Sarah. Good morning on the West Coast. Good afternoon on the East Coast. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm happy. I'm doing great. <laughs> How are you? Are you feeling happy today? <laughs> I'm feeling very happy. Okay, is that corny? Like, we're, we work at Happily, and we're just so happy. I know our topic right now is staying happily under stress. So that is a two-fold type of thing for me. I think it's very hilarious, happily under stress, because it seems like we're happily and we're under stress, but instead it's like we're going into the 2024 event season. We know how stressful that is coming up and how it gets difficult, but how do we as event producers, event HQ deal with stress? So Sarah, I'm going to pose this to you. You are the CEO of Happily. How do you deal with stress coming up on our 2024 season when we have a lot of exciting events coming up? I do think that you choose to be happy. There's actually like science to that says that you can decide to be happy. Like even if you're like a gloomy person, apparently like gloominess is actually like about half of it is genetically predetermined. So if you've got like gloomy parents, you might be a gloomy person too. <laughs> my Whoa. parents are pretty, pretty happy. Yeah, but <laughs> isn't that wild? Yes. Well, I always had, you know, I had some amazing parents, but you know, I could see, you know, the life of adulting, adult, you know, adult adulting, it gets stressful. So, and I think that kind of determines if it's gloomy. I never thought of that. That's a good one. I'm gonna have to look more into it. You have to send me that article. Yeah, I will. And um and so I do like I do choose like make an mm. active effort to choose um to be happy. And it's great that I think that like that I subscribe to this notion that you can choose that because you really can't choose stress. I guess like I did choose the event planner job which is also like on all the lists usually like top 10 like in the top 10 of most stressful jobs with like firefighters emt <laughs> police <laughs> so i guess i could like choose a, a less stressful life and a less stressful job but i really love it because i love mm -hmm. the work that we do and i love helping people and um making like a dent in the universe i think that the within the sort of like actual like work that that we're doing, whether it's like events or just like administrative operational at HQ, I um, have become really good at like triage or delegation as some might, you know, call it. The way that I like approach triage is, um, is I'll, I'll first like listen to, usually this, okay, so usually the stress is like, I'm gonna back up, because usually the stress is comes from somebody else, like asking mm -hmm. you to do something where you're like, oh, I already have too much on my plate, right? Or it's like asking that of yourself, or you like, I do that, or I'm like, oh, I and, and I wanna do this. Like, actually I'm like making this like short film for for Orion's like one year oh. birthday and it's stressing me out because I just don't have the time for it, but like, I wanna do it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but why is it stressing you out? It's like a one-year-old, little video montage of his life as you know what is the stress about like oh. that to me you know that that could be like that could be relaxing because it's for your you personally that's 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 a stress reliever for me mm -hmm. when it's dedicated to my kids but for you you say it's stressful well, it's stressful because I like have a very high bar for excellence, I guess, like, and I know that this thing that I make will be seen by him for mm -hmm. the rest of his life and his mm -hmm. grandkids, maybe that like, I might not even meet, right? So like, I don't know, like that legacy of it, uh, mm -hmm. the timing of it, like, just even like seeing like, you know, like, I don't know, like, I'm worried about like other people watching it and like not being like as like, in love and entertained with it as I will be. <laughs> Mostly though you, you, the time where I'm like, oh, I got to get this done. And that's the thing with events too, is like, you you know, you got to get all these things done at mm -hmm. by this date. And like, you can't really move that date past. I can't make Orion be one year, but like have his one year birthday later, <laughs> you know? That is true. Like when I came into events, that was my biggest stress. Like the event is the event day for television. You could sometimes, you know, like throw in a rerun or push it out for a later day. But an event, 
People are going to the event. They are attending. Your talent is there. You have to show. And it's like that to me is the biggest stressor. stressor. So gearing up all the way into the event is the most stressful for me. On the day, I'm like, oh, we're done. Like I'm mentally like relaxed then because I'm seeing the show and there might be some hiccups, but I'm like, we, you know, we'll deal with those at the end. But as long as we make it to the finish, I, mm -hmm. like that is my like stress relief mm -hmm. when the show is going on, like gearing up. I am probably crazy and drive a lot of people crazy, but I think they deal with it. They, they deal with it. But, um, I tend to feel that my stress relief lately has been slowing down, just calming down and be like, okay, Danielle, take a step back. Um, how can this improve? How can you work on this? Um, what are ways, what are solutions? And I think that has been helping me in 2024 because we have a busy season and we have hired tons of specialists on our current events. And it's been so great just seeing the growth of our producers, of our APs, of everyone on our team that we hire. And I think that makes our life less stressful. Yeah. I mean, even look, like the, some of the people like listening today are like, Fadia, my like shout out has been a big stress reliever for me, like in HQ with like just helping like build so many like processes and being like a great thought partner and I know Isaac has been also like an incredible didn't he win Isaac won our like a producer rock stars I think so. I think so. just like yeah. he like came through and we know that when Isaac's on a show like it's covered and he's like more on top of it than we could be which is saying mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> and yes. That's so great. You know, it's just like team members are like so great to like help with like lightening the load. And then also team members or people on your team who aren't carrying their weight can be um, the stress. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I would like to talk to Ike only because we, he is hired on some of our fast pace um, projects. Like I, I remember him being on a project that needed to be executed in three weeks. How did you manage that, Ike? Like, that is amazing. And I would love to hear how you dealt with the stress, if you were even stressed at all. Hiring a great team um, helps him manage his stress, um, especially and over communicating and the specialists, as we call them, um, understanding the goal at large. Um, and I think that's credited to you as a CEO and everybody in HQ, because we all work um, together. Even um, our account managers, uh, they have a hand in it, everything in the selection. So I feel like I hate to say like, oh, we're one big happy family, but we are. And that helps with our stress. That helps with the stress of the, uh, of the project and also with the client. I think I've failed so many times that I'm really comfortable with failure. And so generally, if somebody makes a mistake, like it's, there's a culture at Happily where if you're making, if you make a mistake, it's cool. Like you can learn from it. And we're open about that mistake. We're open about that failure with each other. And we really like have these like learning moments and mm -hmm. um, we work together to like build plans um, for how to not make that mistake again. I think I get like, it's like when like mistakes keep happening over and over again through like negligence or you know like something like that mm -hmm. that's that's Moving where too fast. Like, <laughs> yeah that's where it's like okay like let's part ways here but um even if a mistake happens again but it's just like more of like a procedural like error like procedural like a process that we put in place that wasn't really quite right like mm -hmm. even then it's like okay like we just sort of keep learning and i think like not having that extreme like that like the stress of like removing the stress of like oh if I fail like I'm fired or if I fail like people are going to be angry at me like I'm going to mm -hmm. have like bad like negative emotions I feel like that really helps with like keeping everybody like happy and chill it does it does because I was the opposite. I'm still learning how to, it's okay to, and I'm seeing like this new generation, it's okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them and be okay with it because you're growing and learning. Before, as a former athlete, yes, I was a superstar, division one basketball star. Yes. Our coaches 
they were so hard on us that we had to go 110%. How do you go 110%? You are killing yourself. And that's what I was raised on or because I played basketball for majority of my life. So coming out of that and working for Happily has helped me like basically be okay with, okay, Danielle, that's growth. You're learning from that experience. You could get better. Stop being so hard on you. And I'm still working on it. I know you constantly tell me like, Danielle, I think you're overthinking or you're thinking too much about it. I'm like, okay, you know, but maybe a little bit therapy with a little help, Uh, (laughs) but it's going to take time for me to get out of that mindset, which I'm working on and being okay with like, it's okay, Danielle. You're good. And I think that was my, that is my biggest stressor, being okay with learning and growing, especially being um, in the leadership role. We have little babies, right? Like, and you watch their learning and growing all the time. And can you imagine, like, you wouldn't want, you know, Ahmad to be like stopping what he's doing because he's like upset that he's like not doing it like perfect the way, you know, like on the first try, right? I definitely was part like really hard and like went deep in like hustle culture like when I started my business and I think when you do start a business like you have to have to like otherwise like there's just too many things that you have to do you know Mm -hmm. um in order from like in order to be able to make a business out of like one person it's a lot of the reason why i like built happily too because i was like oh man i wish i could have just like had someone else like do the marketing and someone (laughs) else do the books and like all that stuff and so now that's the platform that we have for our our specialists but Mm -hmm. i don't think that like 110 or 150 percent is like really (laughs) what's needed all the time i think 100 percent you know, focus Mm -hmm. is way, way, way more important than 110% like effort. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really say that because when, when I think as producers, we're also really used to multitasking. And when you're like multitasking, you don't have that 100% focus. And so you never get to, so then you kind of have to exert like more effort in order to be able to get a task done correctly the Mm -hmm. first time um so that's part of where that maybe like slowing down piece is maybe less about slowing down but more about like the focus and like taking out like the noises and the distractions um you know from the task at hand and then i think actually things speed up when you're able to like block things manage it yeah i um we have a couple of our hq team here i have andrew who is an amazing person he and i one of my stress releaser releaser with him is talking about jazz. We love jazz. So we talk, that's like, when we're having a busy day, I'm like, Hey, I'm listening to jazz. And he's like, Oh, and he get, he will send me an artist to listen to or a music, a playlist. And I'm like, Oh, this helps me release my stress. Because again, like you said, we're moving fast. And my thing is I need to focus on slow down and focus, but I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. That's not like a Dr. Seuss thing. I know I read Dr. (laughs) Seuss every day to my kids. Finding those little points or little things that I could do to help me like just like get out of the hustle and bustle and relax and stay focused and slow down. So jazz is one of mine. If it's really a stressful day, going out in my neighborhood when it's not raining and storming like we've had the past couple of days and taking a walk up and down the neighborhood. Um, That's one of them. I go hiking on the weekends. I haven't gone since the baby because when I did two months after, I almost killed myself and I saw a bear. Um, So, but I am going to get back into hiking. That's a stress relief because, you know, it's good mental. Fadia, shout out to Fadia um, because she works out every day um, after work. Incorporating (laughs) a spa day. These are some of the items that I do, I have incorporated and I'm going to implement more in 2024 because... Mm -hmm. We have, like I say, tons of events coming up. We're hiring our specialists and I want to make sure I'm bringing my best self to them to make sure their events are going as planned, going as well as they can, and that we're present that I'm presenting a safe place for them. I know you deal with the clients more. How, how does that, how do you manage that? Well, first off, we need to do a spa day together. (laughs) <laughs> in 2024. I was like, that sounds good. Yes. More spa days in 2024 is a great plan. You know, with our clients, I think it's 
uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to, like, sort of go back to that triage thing. It's about triage, you know, like, mm -hmm. listening to what the requests are, asking mm -hmm. the questions to just really make sure we have a defined request, um, and then assessing the urgency of that request, but also the difficulty for solving it and mm -hmm. who to solve it. Like, that's all part of that like listen and assessment, like step one of triage. There's a bunch of things like wrapped up into there because I think in my earlier days, I would listen and go. And okay. I wouldn't ask the questions to clarify, right? Yes, don't judge <laughs> um, me. And then, and then like you get, we sort of get better. And then like I would listen, I would ask, and then be like, okay, I'm going to do this. Instead of being like, okay, Danielle should do this, right? And also sometimes, and also in earlier days too, I would say yes to anything, even if it was too big or just too mm. hard to solve. The great thing about like getting more experience is like problems f feel smaller and like you have more tools and resources to solve bigger things, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I do actually wish I said no a few more oh. times than I did. <laughs> like back. I'm incorporating the word no. I know Shonda Rhimes had a book about that. Or was it the yes? I can't remember. But I think she, it was basically saying that you need to start saying no to some things. Uh, and that might, that will help you. And I'm always like, okay, let me, I can do it or figure it out type of person. And maybe I do need, well, not maybe, I do need to say <laughs> no <laughs> um, sometimes. Um, well, so, I yeah. like no feels like such a like, you know, like, like scary word um mm -hmm. and even like sorry i'm like a mom now i like think about every, i like analogize everything to a kid it makes me like so unrelatable to all the cool you cool single people out there um <laughs> but but you know when you have this kid i uh, have a kid you're like they now kind of teach you to like not oh, say yes. no to the child you right? learn a lot of lessons Woo! just i learned patience with my kids and now, especially with my daughter, she calls herself a teen and I'm like, you're not even a preteen, but I, you know, just her in this moment, whoo, it's a lot of patience. So, you know, I'm glad Orion is a boy. You don't have to deal with these hormones, but yeah, patience. <laughs> you never know. He's like really <laughs> emotional, but like, um, I, I replaced no with not yet or not me. And that is actually... Like that, like subtle shift, like mm -hmm. actually helps me to say no without feeling the guilt of the no or the weight of the no. It's I have like a question. He wants to play with scissors and like not yet. When you get bigger, <laughs> one day you're gonna be able to do that, right? And I, I say, let me think about that. Which Amani internalizes. I'm saying yes, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying yes. I'm saying let me think about that. So you have to watch out how you phrase it, especially with these little mind people. They know how to manipulate anything. So, Ooh. you know, I'm just giving you fair warning. And like she generates anything when I'm like, okay, let me let me think about it. Uh, not right now. She thinks like, okay, well, mommy's going to think about it later and say yes. And I'm oh. like, no, okay. I, I, that is that was not <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> Oh, I'm so. still learning. So, it, yeah, so interesting. Yeah, I think like, uh, you know, after the, like sort of like that assessment phase, then, you know, really actually tackling like then I have this like smaller list of problems, you know, mm -hmm. or things that I need to solve. And like, I generally try to like solve like a small, like do a small fast win to just like get that like mm -hmm. dopamine fast hit wins. I've heard and you like say that. build like momentum for my own energy to be like, okay, I'm going to keep like going and getting it and getting it and getting it. You know, when I need to like have a stopping moment where like, you know, I just have to do a different task, my focus needs to shift or I am like not feeling happy with like where things are like creatively going and I, you know, just like getting stuck or like, I don't know, it's just problems like getting too big, right? Then I hand it off mm -hmm. and I always, mm -hmm. and I don't, like and i always hand it off i always like will be like hey you can you help check in with me to make sure this gets done like even though it's like maybe i'm not fully handing off a test i try to fully hand off tests like and have a partner be like hey like throw it over to anna can you do this ping me when you're done and then i'll come back in and that like that actually makes sh like i like know that the momentum is like still going um that's super helpful um to like kind of 
removing that stress for when things get really difficult. And then it's also like really great to just be able to know that like, I'm again, it's again, like, I think that like guilt of not saying no or guilt of like not getting things done, you know, it doesn't feel like that's going to happen anymore because we've got like team to help you out. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So wrapping up the episode, cause I know we're almost close to time. How we deal with being overly stressed at happily or happily overstressed is taking that personal time, working out, spa day, future spa day, HQ, um, fast winds, focusing, starting to delegate more. Anything else that I miss um, that we can start implementing or we are implementing here at Happily? <laughs> I think but, like, I think just good listening, you know, is mm -hmm. like listening to yourself listening to other people and just making sure that like we're like actually helping and like solving problems mm -hmm. you know and that we're doing things like with intention and mm -hmm. joy like intentionally getting things done happily mm -hmm. um that's i feel like the secret to all of it so if you are a freelancer we love to work with you on a um on a happily productions you can always check our career page at happyteamhappily.com and cre please create a profile and make sure you fill out your profile because that is the best way to get a gig um, for gig opportunities. Thank you again. I'm going to toss it to Sarah, our CEO, to close us out, Sarah. So I'm not like a Russell, uh, what is it, Russell Simmons, goodbye, compete, whatever he used to say for Def Jam. What, what is your closing remark, Sarah? I don't know. I'm like erratic. I, I but I, I, I do like to, I do like, even though I feel like it's like NSFW sort of, like mm -hmm. I like to tell people, happy hump day. <laughs> that okay, happy hump win, uh, happy hump day. Remember that commercial? <laughs> hump day. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.